my angels, y'all. All around, there are angels all around waiting for me. Mm. He's so good, y'all. He's so good. He's so, so good. Mm. Try him. I promise you he's good. Just try him. I dare you to try him. I promise you he won't let you down. He may not give you what you want, but he's going to give you what you need. And that's a promise. I can promise you that. I can promise you that. Everybody say I am the one. I can promise you that. Ms. Ree will never lie to you about the Father. Never, ever. But I'm going to close this door back here because it's bothering me on this video. So, anywho, that's what we're going to do with that. Who y'all. Mm, let me tell you. Um, Last night, well, yesterday, period. Um, You know how some people just wake up and because they don't know the Lord and because he's not, you know, leading and guiding them and he's not their joy and their peace. They wake up and, and, and they're mad with the world. Not necessarily you, but they're just mad with the world. They're just, just mad. Mad with the world. Mad with the world. Whatever. However you want to call it. Whatever you call it. Well, anyway, brother man woke up mad with the world, mad with Riri, mad with something, mad about anything, you know. And he wasn't feeling the best. You know what I'm saying? Whether it was physical, spiritual, mental, whatever. I don't know what it was. But, um, and, and it, to keep it as real as I can keep it, I wanted to choke a Negro. You know what I'm saying? I wanted to choke him, y'all. I wanted to choke him. I wanted to choke him. I said, God, here's his number. I wanted to choke him. Because... My thing is, you can't sit there and have an attitude with everybody because something didn't go your way, or you know, you, I don't know if you you wake up like that. You just I don't I don't I have no answers, y'all, none. But what I do know is that there's another sister, a brother, or somebody out there, a spouse somewhere that goes through the same things that we all go through, and that we need to pray each other up, keep each other prayed up. I'm not necessarily pray for for um, just marriages, but I pray for the spouse, that person that, that, that's on the other end. And for me, I'm a giver, giver, giver. And a lot of times, Miss Rita don't get back all that she gives, you know. But I had to learn how to stop looking for the physical return, y'all. I had to stop looking for the physical return, which when I didn't get it, I got disappointed, I got discouraged, and then boom, here come the pity party, woe is me, why are you treating me this way, this, that, and the other. So anyway, let's get back to, to yesterday. So Miss Ree went out, did her little grocery shopping, running around, Goodwill, and all that other stuff that I do, right? So when I get back, first of all, he had a rough night, because he was tossing and turning, tossing and turning. So, you know, before I left, I said, you all right? You know, he's like, I said, you had a rough night. And he goes, well, I think I'm coming out with a cold. Okay, I'm going to leave you alone. I went on out the door. What about my business, right? I come back, and I, he's still laying in the same spot on the sofa. So I check on him, you know. I'm like, you know, you all right? You know. And out the blue, he just break nasty. I don't know if y'all, if, if anybody's experiencing this in their homes, with their friends, with, with whomever. You know, but I come to check on your black behind and you break nasty with me. That's cool. I backed the freak off, y'all. Ms. Reed backed off. I backed off and I went to my daddy. Because when you treat me that way, first thing Satan want me to do is lay down, have a pity party, go somewhere and cry. But I had to learn to break that spirit, y'all. I had to learn to break that spirit. That pity party spirit, I had to break it. And now I go in, and when I go in my prayer closet, I go in with a holy anger. And today our bishop was preaching about how you got to go before God real. Real. I ain't saying going up in there cussing and carrying on because that's, that's your sense of real. But you got to come before God with who you really are. And when I came in my prayer warrior, my prayer closet, as a prayer warrior, I came in frustrated and angry. And I told God, look at him. You best to go get him because I'm about to click him and cut his lights off. Because that's what I wanted to do. But y'all know that ain't that ain't how God works. That ain't how God works. 
So I had to make a decision. It's either me or Satan. One of us has got to go. And as far as I know, Miss Ree live here and I ain't leaving. Okay? So, and you know that the devil uses the closest personal thing to you to try to steal your joy and get you off track. Be it your husband, your children, co-worker, boss, church member. It don't matter. Somebody on the road, whatever. He going to use anything and everything he can to pull you off track and to get you mad or disappointed or somewhere having a pity party or whatever. So I went in my prayer closet, y'all. And which what in my prayer closet is whatever room I'm in that he ain't in. You know what I'm saying? So if I'm upstairs, that's my prayer closet upstairs. If he's downstairs, then I'm praying upstairs. He's upstairs, then I go downstairs before my father and say, Look here, God. Brother man got a problem. And Satan has got to go. In the name of Jesus, he has got to go. He has got to go. Open up a window, open up a door, and tell him back to the pits of hell. You got to go in the name of Jesus. And you cover your house in the name of Jesus, in the blood of Jesus. You cover your spouse in the blood of Jesus. You cover everything in that house with the blood of Jesus. And, and guarantee Satan can't stay. He going to try, but he can't stay. He can't stay because he can't handle the weight of the blood of Jesus. He can't handle it. He can't handle it. And getting back to my story. By the end of the night, y'all, who was playing footsies with Miss Ree? <laughs> Hallelujah! You can't tell me my God ain't bad. He, you can't tell me he ain't bad. He come in with the littlest thing, the littlest thing, and he'll come in and back you right up. Cause I said, God, this is I'm I'm done. I'm frustrated. I'm angry. I'm done. I want to take a Negro out. I'm done. I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm tired of being treated like that. If you get tired, you get to a point where you're like, okay, that's it. I can't take no more. I can't take no more. I can't do it. I can't do it. And that's when he picks you up. And you know how they say that, that, that the footprints in the sand, you know, that he'll pick you up and he'll carry you. Y'all, I was frustrated. I was mad. I was down almost in tears because Miss Ree was just mad. She was mad. I was mad. Mad. And I went to God mad. And I told God I was mad. I'm frustrated. I'm tired. And you better go upstairs and handle that man. Because if you don't, I will want to. But you know God is a gentle God. He's a gentle spirit. And when he came in, he came in real smooth. He came in smooth, smooth. God is bad like that, y'all. He bad. And I promise you, try him. Just take one grain of a mustard seed, y'all. Grain of a mustard seed is all the faith that you need for God to come in and do what he needs to do. And he will do it. He will do it. I promise you he'll do it. Every time that that boy come in here acting like a fool, I go to God and I rebuke Satan and I cover him with the blood of Jesus. I cover my house, me, my spirit, my heart, his heart, anything in every situation I covered in the blood of Jesus. And God smooths it out. Smooths it. I mean, it's, it's, it's black before it becomes that rough diamond, that beautiful diamond. And that's how it is, God. That's how God works. That's how it is, y'all. That's how he works. He's smooth. He's smooth. He's smooth. He's smooth and he's bad. He is bad. You speak to that thing and it has got to go. You speak to that mountain, that spirit, not the person. Because if you notice, I didn't go to him and start hooping and hollering at him. I went to God about him. I went to his maker about him. I didn't go to him because I could have went to him and said, you know what? You ain't going to be talking to Ms. Ree like that and this and that and this and that and this and that and this and that. Then it would have been a big blowout argument. But I went to my daddy, y'all, and my daddy said, okay, baby, I got you. I hear you. I got you back. Now back up and let me do what I do. I came on upstairs, y'all. Act like I ain't know the boy was in the house. And like I said, when it was all said and done, who was playing footsies with Ms. Ree? My God is bad, y'all. Try him. Trust him. Try him just one time and I guarantee you'll be hooked. You'll be hooked. He better than crack. He better than marijuana. He better than sex, y'all. He better than any placebo you can have. He's the best. You can't top him. You can't beat him. All you can do is try him and trust him. Believe it. Believe it. Believe it. And to all you women out there that are dealing with these men who have control issues and, and want to make you feel smaller than what you are and, and de degrading, 
Speak to that spirit. Don't go to the man. Go to the spirit. Who is your father? He's the spirit. You speak against that control spirit. You speak against those generational curses that his daddy did, and his daddy's daddy, and his uncles, and all of that that he learned that mess from. You go after that spirit. Cover him in the blood of Jesus. Get some anointing oil and put it on him as he sleeps. He, you ain't got to touch him while he's awake. Touch him while he sleeps. Put it on his car hand, the steering wheel. Put it on the door handles. Put it on anything you know he got to touch to get in or out of that house. Y'all need more information. You know what to do. Send Miss Re a personal message. Send me a video and I will respond. Y'all be blessed because my God is bad to the bone. Bye.